So I'm here to say hello to uh, Malvika Mahindra. Malvika was one of our Canadian Administrative Law students last year, and she's very kindly agreed to come and talk to you in order to give you some insight about the module and about where you can go in administrative law after the, the Canadian Administrative Law module. So welcome, Malvika. Um, so you have, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have decided to go on and to actually article with a firm that specialises to some extent in administrative law. Could you start by telling me a little bit about that? Sure. So I work with a firm that primarily practices immigration law, um, and. What kind of threw me off a bit was in Canada, we call it administrative law, immigration law. So that was a, a new kind of learning term for me. Uh, we also practice family law. So how I got into that was just a whole lot of networking. Um, I didn't, I applied when I got back uh, to Canada, I was applying a lot. I was applying a lot as well when I was in England. Um, and I had a lot of coffees with a lot of lawyers. So it was actually a lawyer that I had met who whose mentor hired me. So it was like several chains of interconnected networking. Um, I ended up meeting with my principal now. Um, I liked her company. She liked my company. We bonded on the law that she's practicing and just regular conversation. And so she said, hey, why don't you come as a summer student? Um, I started as a summer student. And actually, because we've done the program in England, I still have to write my NCAs. So what I would be doing is informally articling she'd be writing me an abridgment letter to shorten my articling. So I'm doing everything that an articling student does, but I'm doing it in the summer student role until my NCs are done. So I guess that's how I went through it. I know you can use other portals, which are helpful, but I went the old school networking, talking, coffee drinking route, and that's how I landed my position. Thanks. And was... Was immigration law, was this an area that you sought out? Is this an area that you actively wanted to work in? You know, I can honestly say no. I never thought I would go into this type of law. I know that I enjoyed reading about the cases in the Canadian Administrative Law module, um, but I never thought that I would actually go into that direction. I thought I'd be working in more transactional legal work, um, I, I find it funny because I have an undergraduate degree in psychology. So a lot of the work that I do now also kind of triggers those skills. So it's, it's funny. It's very people-based um, and it's, it just fit right in with the, you know, the history I have with my undergraduate degree and my law degree now. It works out really well and I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. So you find administrative law, immigration law, an interesting area to work in? I do in practice. Um, I know it can feel a little bleak when you're doing the readings and you're watching the lectures and it's hard to understand exactly what's going on. But I would advise really looking into the cases because that's what I did at least and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and it gives me perspective now, even looking back at cases now to see that these are real people with real lives and not just tests that are being put through. I mean, legally, as lawyers, you have to know the tests, you have to know the thresholds but they're also real-life situations that are affecting people, which makes it more meaningful, I would say. Thanks. And is, as a professor, is there anything that you think I could do to help with that process of bringing the cases alive or bringing the subject alive for the students? Um, I think that the Baker workshop that you have in place, if that's still proceeding, is really good. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I, ha I thought it helped put things into perspective and really break down the steps. Um, the only thing I would have maybe wanted now working in administrative law is more of a in-depth, um, I guess, more in-depth steps to judicial review, which I'm still learning as someone who's working in the practice. The textbook is very helpful. I do go back to it. I do read it. And also looking at the Federal Court of Canada website, um, there are a lot of guided steps to judicial review and procedural fairness that would help. So I would say just using those sources and having more workshops would help bring the module more alive. Well, thanks. That's good advice. We 
we don't actually have the Baker workshop as such, but I did take a, an hour's lecture and I took students through Baker pretty much paragraph by paragraph. So the substance is still Very there. Yeah. Um, so now that you are articling or informally articling in immigration law, did you find the admin law module as taught, did you find it to be good preparation for your uh, articling? Um, yes, I did, because I think it familiarized me with a lot of the legal terminology that I use today. Baker is one of the primary cases that we talk about a lot at our firm, along, along with Dunsmere and Babylon. Um, and I find that, so I personally, when, if you, you said that they've reviewed Baker, Baker is based on a humanitarian application, I write humanitarian applications. So that's very interesting, looking at the actual test. Um, that would be helpful, too, going through what's in a humanitarian. So, you know, rather than reading a case, seeing what's actually done in the work, like the written piece of work, I found that to be super helpful. But it was very helpful in the cases and the legal terminology. And getting my mind into that focus and, you know, the gear shifting in that way of what is administrative law, I found it a very helpful module. And thanks. And was there any surprises? Is there anything that, you know, when you got to practice, you thought, oh, this is completely different from what you were expecting or what our yeah, administrative I, law module might have led you to expect? I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it personally, because I had several conversations with Sabrina where I, I felt that, um, I wasn't doing as well. I found the course very daunting from a distance. Um, and now working in the in practice and, you know, working in administrative law, I'm just shocked by how much I enjoy it. And it's not scary at all. Like, as I said before, if you put the stories to the people, it becomes very meaningful. So I found that very interesting and surprising when I started practicing. Yeah. And so... And I guess this is the question that all our admin law students will be wanting to hear the answer to. But do you have any advice to them on how to do well on the module? What, what are your three most important criteria or things that you can do to do well? I would say that this is personally how I studied as a student for every single module, but I'm sure it's very effective for the Canadian administrative module as well. Um, I focused a lot on cases and journal articles because I think as a lawyer it's better to read those um, it helps with your reading it helps with your writing of course the textbook is great because we use it for our NCAs as well but I would find how I would study is um, honestly I would skim the readings I'm not suggesting everyone works like this but this is how I would work I would really look at the cases I would really look at the articles and anything I didn't understand from lectures or from an office hour, I would then go back to the textbook. So I would use the textbook as my last resource because I find that we don't, in practice, we use textbooks, but we would first go to social science research or case. So getting um, used to those primary resources, I would say that's helpful. And asking questions, I know this is a little bit of a cliche, but asking questions when you get them first. Like if a question pops up in lecture, just ask. Someone might be thinking it. I uh, go to an office hour the same week. Otherwise, it will pile up because I found that administrative law made more sense at the end as like a big picture um, course. And I find that if you if you ask before, it will you're saving yourself. You should just ask the questions before rather than piling it all up at the end. Yeah, and I'm not that scary, am I? No, <laughs> no, you're not at all. <laughs> so I know some of the students this year find the workload for the module quite high what what advice or what thoughts do you have about that um i know it can be with so you know with so many courses it can be difficult but i think it's great preparation if you are going into administrative law um there is a lot of work that is expected out of an article student but especially in this practice um i think that is one of the biggest things that I'm thankful for studying at Sussex, the workload that I have um, at my firm right now and the workload that I had at Sussex, that skill really prepared me. So I would say if you want to get into this field, it's great preparation and 
it's just preparing you for life as an art acclaimed student or as a, as a student in a firm. And so now as you're art acclaimed, you are also preparing for your NCAs now. Is that, is that what you said earlier? That's correct, yes. So how is that going? Um, I am not preparing as much as I should. But the good thing is, is because I'm working so much, I find that I'm learning on the job. So I'm not so scared. I don't feel like, oh, my God, I have to go home and I have to read and I have to do this. Because a lot of people in my firm have been through similar processes and they help me with the questions I have um, on site. And I just I have like a notebook where everywhere I go and I just take notes, anything that's relevant. And I consolidate it with my NCA um, prep. So. I feel like if you're working, um, it does help if you're working and you have those questions. It's all, it's all consolidated. I don't feel fear or anything that I'm not studying enough. So I should be studying more, but I feel good working as well. And did you find your study of Canadian administrative law helpful towards that, the relevant paper? Or was there anything that could have been more helpful, do you think? Um, I haven't actually done the paper yet, um, but um, the textbook that we use is the same textbook that we're supposed to use for the NCA. So I believe it's very relevant uh, the way that it's structured at Sussex. Uh, the course relates to what we would be writing for the NCA. So I would say yes. Yeah, and that is in fact why we use the Van Harten textbook is because it's recommended for NCA prep. Personally, I much prefer the Sausen and Flood, but um, we do think that it helps students with their NCAs if they're already familiar with the Van Harten textbook. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a textbook we use at work. So. Okay, that's good to know. So mm -hmm. you're getting good value if you've paid for the textbook. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so finally, uh, do you have any other advice for students who might be interested enough in administrative law that they want to go and work in immigration or for that matter, labor relations or any other of the areas that are covered by administrative law? I would say um, don't be like me and don't be scared of the course or what the course is saying exactly. Um, I think they're, they're just rules that you have to follow, but actually going into a firm or meeting with someone that is in administrative law or immigration law may help you understand exactly what it is that immigration lawyers do. Um, that would be my advice because I won't lie, I was very scared of judicial review. When we learned it, I was terrified. I had so many office hours with Sabrina trying to go through it. And now I do judicial review at work and I love it and I find it fun. So. Don't be scared of the module like me. Uh, read, write, uh, read more onto the web and see what resources you can find and speak to people. That's the best way with any field in law that you want to pursue, I would say. So don't be scared and judicial review is fun. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good concluding note. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Malvika Mahindra. I'm sure all our students will be grateful that you took 20 minutes out of your day to come and speak to them. So thank you very much. Of course, I'm more than happy to. Thanks so much for having me.